Hey everyone, we're at the G Skill booth now with Kingpin, who's got this setup. So this is the Robo Clocker, right? We were talking about this at EVGA's headquarters the other day. You've made a couple of changes though. Before we get into all the overclocking, can you tell me about what you did here versus the other day? Uh, I put a straight pipe on the back to, to add a little more drama for the crowd. <laughs> yeah, so now we've got an, an exhaust basically straight into our faces. <laughs> the system is currently running at 5.6 gigahertz, yes. right? Yep, 7980XE running 5.6. Time spy. And I think, I, I don't know what our, our goal here is for frequency, but we're gonna push it a bit further. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's View 37 case. The View 37 focuses on highlighting custom PC builds with its full panoramic window and tinted front acrylic. In our thermal testing, the View 37 performed reasonably well when considering its looks focused build, which is partly thanks to the airflow design and the removal of a bottom power supply shroud. For a balance of looks and performance, check the link in the description below for the View 37. And if you don't know what the system is, basically, quick recap, the RoboClocker has this inlet hooked up to it to a liquid nitrogen tank off camera, and that's feeding liquid nitrogen straight into the system. It's going through two valves to either the CPU or the GPU, and those can be open or closed based on what our uh, technician over here is doing, <laughs> Tin, and uh, he types in a value, and then they can bring down the temperature to reach that target value. I call it, he types it in. That's right, it's like a Formula One team. So <laughs> what are we, what's the first step here? Uh, so the first step is uh, test the limits of the CPU. Uh, the CPU is good for about 5.7, so I think that's the target. Um, I want to check, make sure that the CPU is stable, can run, and then we start to worry about the GPU, but focus on CPU first. Cool, okay, so we're at 5.6 now. What, uh, what, what uh, voltage do you have right now? Um, we're using 1.5 uh, V-Core and about 2.35 on the VIN for the 7980XE. So let's, uh, why don't you take it away, I guess, for the next step? Um, actually, 1.5 is enough to max the CPU out. It'll do 5700 at 1.5, easy. Uh, maybe about 10 more degrees, I think, should get us there. What are we, uh, what are we operating at right now? Uh, 5600, 5600 for, exactly. Uh, for temperature? Temperature? Uh, about minus 85, but this CPU can actually do around minus 100. So, so what's uh, on the back? You have a, a socket heater on the back here, right? Yeah. Can you walk us through? I didn't cover that in the original video. Yeah, so. we had a cover, right? Um, well, the socket heater keeps the socket warm, and it keeps the condensation from forming in the socket. It's actually really key. So I came in this morning and set this up, 9 a.m. It's been running time spy ever since, nonstop. Not one crash. If it didn't have that socket heater, this system would have been done a long time ago, for sure. Very cool. So we got uh, succeeded, hopefully, through this run, 5.6 yeah. gigahertz. 20K CPU score, man. I mean, the system can do this, no problem. So very nice. So what's, what's, uh, what's your next objective? Where are you going well, for frequency next? Let's try 5.7. Yeah, let's try 5.7. Uh, the, the, the limit of this CPU is, is a little over 5.7 on the best day. So. If this thing can do 5.7, I would be pretty happy with that. And 3.7 cache. And what are what are you adjusting right now? Uh, basically, I set the ring ratio to 37, and I set all the CPU multipliers to 57. Uh, I'm using, you know, I'm setting all the ratio, all the cores to the same ratio, so using fixed ratio overclocking. And this is with the EVGA Elite utility. Yeah, Elite. Um, mm, this one's a beta version, but yeah, it's it's our U Elite utility. So yeah, let's try let's, let's try 5.7. See if it'll run. What a 7980XE is pretty well known for power consumption. Yeah. What, any idea what kind of power consumption you're pushing? What's the highest power we hit on 7980? I think around 950 watts, 900 watts. Yeah. 900 watts, man. Uh, 900 watts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. All right, so we're going into graphics test one. What's the GPU setup for right now? Uh, right now, the GPU is, I think it's running maybe 1900 or 2000. We didn't pull the GPU down yet. We want to make sure the CPU is solid, system's running good, then we bring the GPU down. All right, so 900 watts or something like that. Yeah. And uh, what, I guess while we're waiting for this to run, let's go through the rest of the system here. So sure. I kind of recap the basics of the RoboClocker. What I didn't talk about is why did you call it RoboClocker? Um, it's Spe specifically, what's the automated part? Well, the robo, because it sounds kind of like overclocker, right? And this thing sort of replaces. The big joke at work is I'm out of a job now <laughs> <laughs> because we have this machine. So we're kind of like, hmm, it's not really an overclocker. It's a robo clocker. So the name kind of fits. 
I think. What's uh, what all is automated? I know you have a software set up on the laptop to set the target temperature. <laughs> so you type in the temperature. I guess the valves open or close based on what temperature these thermocouples are reading here. Yep, and also 12 volt sensing and uh, loading sensing for the CPU and the GPU. So um, that's mostly the timing, the timing of the LN2 delivery. Like it'll it'll hit fast, it'll it'll sustain the LN2, or it'll cut it off depending on what it needs, the power. So what is it? Uh, what do you do now? Now that you don't have to pour LN2, any new hobbies? You know, it's cool for the show, right? I mean, it's a little more dramatic than pouring, I think. It's right. like the next level. But yeah, yeah, I think it's time for me to take up a new hobby. I don't know, maybe maybe mining, who knows, something else. I don't know. Mining with this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd be the next step, right? Like seven <laughs> GPUs on valves, eight GPUs. That'd be crazy. All right, so uh, other components on the system. We're still going through Time Spy right now. Looks like it's stable, so that's yeah. good. Uh, other components. X299 Dark for the motherboard, I can see that on the back plate. What do you have set up? I'm assuming all EVGA parts, of course. What do you have set up for the power supply? 1600 T2, uh, great PSU for 7980XZ. I don't, can't really beat it. Um, and we got the Titan V and G-Skill Trident C memory, DDR4. And the Titan V is modded, as we, we mentioned earlier. Yes, yeah, so it has some mods. <laughs> Tin put some mods on it. Right. Well, one of the easier mods is just the two fans, right? So it's got a couple of fans on the VRM components. Yeah. Then you have a custom block from RoboClocker on the GPU and another one on the CPU. It's cool to show it. A lot, mostly positive response. Oh. Uh, it's got a blue screen on. What was your? Uh... Well, we're pushing, man. We're pushing now. Okay, so we're in BIOS now on the X299 Dark, and now, I'm basically I'm setting it up for Fire Strike. So. Firestrike really is, is runs the best on 16 cores, 32 threads. So I'm disabling the last two cores on the processor to get the best score. If you leave it at 1836, you, you get a bad score in Firestrike. Some uh, load balancing issue in the software or something? I think so, right? I don't think it utilizes all those cores. Right. Mm. So let's see. Let's see if it's stable in Firestrike. If it's stable, we'll push the card a little bit. So are you going to rename yourself on Hardware Bot, on 3D Mark, on all these sites? Just we were, talk we were discussing that, like who gets credit, <laughs> who, who, gets, who gets credit for the scores now, right? Are they, are they my scores? All right, so let's put the CPU at 5.7 because we know she's stable. What's the highest score you got in Time Spy? I don't remember. Uh, we did the, we also had a 7980XE and I think we stopped at, I was running all 18 threat or cores. I think we had 49, uh, for the multiplier for the first two cores, then 48 for the rest. Okay. But I can't remember the score. Okay. I forgot to enable HT, my bad. So I'll boot in, set 5.7 on the CPU, and then maybe let's set 2150 on the card. That's a good place. 2150 on the Titan V? Yeah. What's the highest you got on it? So I think we capped it out with an offset of uh, about 100 megahertz. Okay. We did, so we did 200, but I think Originally, when the Titan Vs were new, Afterburner was reading every offset as times two, so or divide by two, or some offset of two x. But so yeah, that, that'll be our target. What was your highest score? All right. So for reference, for Time Spy, when we did our run, we were at fifteen thousand four ninety four for total score, just for Time Spy non extreme. Graphics, we were at fifteen thousand two eighty four. CPU, we were at sixteen thousand eight hundred three. And then for uh, Time Spy Extreme, I think we were closer to something like 8,200, something like that total score. Okay. So what are you what are you expecting to hit? Um, I don't know. This should be easily be 16 something, like easily mid 16s. I think first round, something like that. Total score. It'd be nice if we get over 17. Yeah, that's what I want to see. So. I like the idea of Time Spy Extreme, though. I like Time Spy Extreme, man. I like it better than this. Fan. We liked it because I'm not. It's easier for me to work with a GPU than a CPU because yeah. I'm not as experienced. So right. it takes a lot of the work off of the, yeah, the CPU. Yeah, CPU. You don't need to really do much in Time Spy Extreme, right? It doesn't. Doesn't. It's wicked, man. It looks better with the straight pipe, yeah. I think it looks killer. I just want our camera lens to be frozen over by the end of it. They're getting some nice air conditioning over there. It's like hitting them right in the <laughs> So awesome. All right, so, uh, so walk me through what we're doing right now. You've been running around a little bit. We thought we might have a potential short or something on the SSD, but you were saying that you've never run it this cold really in the lab. It's more, 
more for show. Yeah, I mean, this is a demo system, right? So I plugged it in at 9 o'clock, and it's been running all day. And for, for reference, it's like 4 p.m. now. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, and you can see how much, I mean, it's ridiculous how much ice is on it. It's really a lot of ice, so there could be water someplace. Uh, but anyways, let's keep going. Maybe we can we see can if we're back. Fight it back. Come on, baby. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so it looks like we're back, maybe. I had a bit of a scare with potentially an M.2 SSD short or something like that, but after what? Cycling CMOS and rebooting? It's back up. It's back up and running, so let's uh, let's get it running again in Time Spy. So offset here, 125% power target. Core you're going for plus 200 offset with precision. 200 offset. Should give around 2100. Yeah. Uh, let's go like this. Specifically 213 offset. Yeah. And then this. And 150 on the HBM2. Where do you find the HBM2 typically? Well, first of all, how does HBM2 do with cold? Does it really, does it care? It doesn't. It doesn't do well. Um, all my cards, the Titans, they all overclock higher on air. And then when I put them on LN2, the, the memory clock will go down. What's your highest time spy extreme score? Time spy extreme, I think we said it was total score is 82.45, something like that. Okay. Well, let's see what this can do. Wow, so much ice. This looks fantastic. I was thinking, like, imagine, like, if you did, like, a case mod with, like, an engine yeah. and with the pipes and, like, all the exhaust. It would look so cool. So we've got Time Spy Extreme still running 5.7 on the CPU? Uh, I lowered it a little bit. I set it to 5.5, and I put the mesh at 37 because, as you know, Time Spy Extreme is not so CPU dependent, right? can still get a great score with even 5G. And then the GPU are offset 213 megahertz, which I'm guessing is just a number you pre-tested and know to be stable. Yeah, it's like always like the starting clock, but this card actually can do almost 2300. So uh, if this one passes and everything's good, then I'll probably leave the CPU alone and then just bring up the GPU, maybe plus 50, plus 50. On the CPU test, this is the last one or is combined next? No, there's no combine in this one. No combine in Time Spy. This one's a killer though. AVX workload, really tough on the CPU. Notice that time, time Spy seems memory intensive as well. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. It crashed. Didn't make it. So uh, we passed on the GPU, 7443. Yeah. GPU is stable, but. Uh, so uh, walk me through what's going on right now. Uh, right now we're trying to calibrate the controller with the actual reading temp that you're seeing. What's your ideal temperature for the speeds you're going for? Mm, this CPU right now needs about minus 85 real temperature on the evaporator. But minus, what was it at? It was at minus 60 when I saw it. Yeah, that's not enough. It needs to be colder. Yeah, past 5.7 stable, man. Wow. So what do we have for score? Should be, should be nice, nice, decent CPU score. Yep, 20K. So that's good. That's what I want to see. Um, so let's see. So what's next? Uh, what's next? Try and push the CPU further. Or are you going for GPU? Uh, let's try. Let's try this. All right. So it took a little while, but we finally got through a bunch of benchmarking for the CPU score. We ended up with 20K plus in Time Spy. That's on a 7980XE, 5.7 gigahertz, which is pretty impressive considering again. With air and with a delit in liquid metal, we were doing something like 4.8, 4.9. So you have 5.7 with this thing, and significantly higher score than what we could achieve earlier. So, uh, what do you what do you plan to do with this now once Computex ends? I mean, are you actually going to use this thing or what? Oh yeah, for sure, man. Um, I will use this probably for all my benchmark records. Uh, we're thinking about doing four-way next, so go after some four-way records on 1080 Ti. So four-way on a, an open-air bench, I guess, with a CPU on it, too. So you've got five total loops, is that right? Yes, yeah. Uh, his controller has five channels, so we can run four GPUs and one CPU. And I probably won't use the case. Um, I, like, I kind of like having everything out on the table. It's more and more suited to my style of benching. Yeah, it makes sense. So as always, if you missed the original coverage of this thing, we've got it on the channel. Subscribe for more Computex coverage, or just check the link below for this thing, because I talk about it in depth in EVJ's HQ earlier this week. And Vince, thank you for joining me. No problem, man. Thank you. We'll see you all next time.